Just in general terms, you'll be familiar with the fact that there is a consistent negative view presented of Iran in the Western media. Um, and you see, I've put some examples up there. One of them is, uh, comes from the US President, Donald Trump, about uh, after, on the 40th anniversary of the revolution, uh, not so long ago, he was talking about 40 years of failure, 40 years of corruption, 40 years of repression, 40 years of terror. This is just rhetoric, but it's picked up and repeated by uh, a lot of uh, state-funded NGOs, which are part of the propaganda war these days, as much as the media. Um, of course, the, the Zionist media, the Jerusalem Post, talking about the, the failures of the Iranian Revolution, and Amnesty International, which is now deeply embedded with the US State Department, has been for a number of years, um, talking about the, the rights of women, as though that's the, um, the flagship for their war against Iran. So that's the general context. You're probably quite familiar with that. In most of these stories, though, there's a great deal of dishonesty, systematic dishonesty. Um, for example, let's look at the Amnesty International uh, supposed campaign for the rights of women. Now, um, it is true that until uh, about two and a half years ago, there were laws in Iran, regulations for women to wear a head covering. Um, and uh, they were removed in December 2017, but there's still very strong informal pressure for women to wear a head covering, basically. But what the campaign by Amnesty International uh, in this country, for example, last year was claiming that a number of these women that are pictured there were charged for not wearing veils or simply removing their hijab in public and were jailed for very lengthy terms for that. This was quite false. The system when the rules were in place until December 2017 was that women would be receive a warning and then perhaps a fine after that. That was how it was policed. Um, now, a group of UN rights experts looked at this and, and condemned the jail sentences that were linked to these women, but pointed out that the three were convicted of assembly and collusion in acts against national security, propaganda against the state, and encouraging and providing for corruption and prostitution. Now, the background to this is that there are systematic programs, particularly in the US, um, through US-funded bodies like the National Endowment for Democracy, which uh, are specifically designed to overthrow the constitutional order in the countries against which they impose sanctions, Iran being one of them, other Cuba, other, there are a number of other countries there. So if uh, these, if they're Iranian or anyone else that's funded by these agencies uh, in some sort of action, it's illegal to basically to, um, in, in terms of Iranian law, to engage in these programs designed to overthrow the state. 